Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos that give a gentle and basic introduction to vectors. Now in previous videos we've been looking at lines and how we can relate vectors to equations of lines. And in this um, video I'm going to talk uh, to you about the span of one vector and the span of two vectors. So the span of one vector is connected with our work with lines and the span of two vectors kind of sets the scene for um, using vectors and connecting them with equations of planes. And in particular, I'll be giving some geometric insight into the span of one and two vectors. Okay, so let me share my screen with you and uh, we'll get underway. Okay, now when people see the idea of span for the first time, say in a linear algebra course, uh, sometimes they're immediately turned off because terms like um, uh, linear combination are used. Okay, but I'm going to start really simple and try to explain the ideas in a geometric sense first. Okay, so as I've already said, um, the span is important for connecting the ideas of lines and planes with vectors and the span arises in other areas of linear algebra and also in the area of ordinary differential equations. So it's a pretty important um, idea. Now the span of a single vector V is connected with all the scalar multiples of that vector. So think of lambda here as being a real number, we take that number and we multiply it by a vector, by the vector, okay? Or take the vector and multiply it by the number, okay? So now geometrically, we know that if we have, say, a vector v, what this scalar multiplication does is it either stretches, compresses, or flips the original vector v. So if, say, lambda was, say, greater than one, What happens is this V gets stretched a bit by a factor of lambda. If lambda was less than uh, one and greater than zero, this vector would get compressed. If lambda was, say, greater than negative one, this vector would get flipped and stretched. Okay, so the equation associated with all scalar multiples of a vector V is the following. And geometrically speaking, the span of a single vector v is the line L that's parallel to the vector v and passes through the origin. Okay, so that's the geometric description of the span. Here I've got the set form down here of, of the span of a vector, but let me just sort of break it down and, and uh, talk about the geometry first. The span of a single vector v is the line L that is parallel to V and passes through the origin. Okay, so let me just um, show you that in two dimensions. I've got a little GeoGebra um, uh, animation that I'm going to share with you. Let's see if I can bring it up. Okay, there it is. Now, here I have got uh, the green vector V which is the original vector, okay? It's just a given vector in two-dimensional space with uh, column vector one, two. And this U is a scalar, in this case, A rather than lambda, but it's a scalar times the, the, the vector U, okay? Now, watch what happens when I move the slider around. Oh, sorry, let me go up here. Okay, if I zoom out a bit, and put this in the oop, put this in the in the middle, and I move this slider. Watch what happens to the uh, the red vector. It gets stretched and compressed. Okay, until it goes off the screen. Okay, can you see that? So I can pretty much. I can zoom out a bit more. I can pretty much get to any point on that blue line that goes through the origin and is parallel to that green vector V. 
just by stretching, compressing or flipping the vector V. Okay, so that line is the line Y equals 2X. So the span of the vector V is the line Y equals 2X. Okay, so let me just uh, write that down for you. All right, so let's say uh, if we're working in two dimensions and V is the vector, say, 1, 2, then the span of this vector is just the following. Well, this becomes... Well, in two dimensions, this x vector is just the column vector x, y. The v vector is 1, 2. And what does this tell? It tells us that x equals lambda times 1, y equals lambda times 2. So if we can just squeeze that in here. So if I combine these and eliminate the lambda, I'll get y equals 2x, which is a line passing through the origin and parallel to this vector v. Okay, now just let me talk about this, this set notation for a minute. In set form, the span of one vector is all those points in Rn or R squared or R cubed, whatever you're working in, that can be reached simply by stretching the original vector. Okay? And let me go back to the GeoGebra animation and share that. I can get to any given point on this line simply by stretching, compressing, or flipping the original vector V. Okay, that's all it's saying. All right, so that is the span of one vector. What about the span of two vectors? It gets a little bit trickier. Okay. All right, so the span of two vectors, V1 and V2, is connected with all linear combinations of so-called linear combinations of V1 and V2, okay? Now, if I cover up that, you'll recognize that from the previous, pretty much from the previous slide. All you're doing to the vector V1 there is stretching, compressing, or flipping it. Same with this one. You've just got a different um, uh, coefficient, if you like. All you're doing to that V2 is stretching, compressing, or flipping it. And then you just add the two things together. So, for example, if I've got two vectors, say there's my uh, V2 and there's my V1, I can get to any point in the plane that contains those two vectors. Okay, well, let's say I wanted to get to this point. Well, that's pretty easy. All I would have to do is stretch this vector by a little bit and stretch this vector by a, a fair bit and then and then join them up using the okay it's a badly drawn parallelogram using the parallelogram law okay so this vector here would be say lambda 1 times v1 this slightly longer vector here would be lambda 2 v2 for some lambda 1 and some lambda 2 and then the the diagonal is the sum lambda 1 v1 plus lambda 2 v2 okay again pretty dodgy um, parallelogram but hopefully you get the idea okay so that that should be a bit longer I guess out there okay so if I can not only go up and down and uh, along the line that contains this vector, or uh, it's parallel, and I can go sort of this way along the line that contains this vector, that means I can move pretty much in two dimensions. And think of all the points in some 
two-dimensional set, well, that'll be a plane. Okay, so instead of being a one-dimensional line that we had over here, we've now got a two-dimensional set associated with the span, or the linear combinations in the span, of two vectors. Okay? So, we conclude a couple of things. The span of two vectors is the following, and the equation associated with all linear combinations of V1 and V2, it describes a plane that is parallel to the vectors V1 and V2 and passes through the origin. Why does it pass through the origin? Well, let's see what happens if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are 0. Okay, well, that'll be 0. So definitely the point 0, 0, 0 um, uh, is included. Okay, so a plane, two-dimensional set, parallel to the vectors V1 and V2, and I think it contains, if you like, the vectors V1 and V2, and passes through the origin. Okay, so a little bit of geometry. Geometrically speaking, the span of one vector is a line. A line that goes through the origin and is parallel to the vector V. The span of two vectors is a two-dimensional set. It's a plane. A plane that is parallel or contains both of the two vectors involved and passes through the origin. Now, the only um, uh, sort of restriction we put on V1 and V2 is that they're not parallel. Because if V1 is parallel to V2, they'll be either pointing in the same direction or opposite directions. You'll just get a line. Okay, You won't be able to go sort of up and down. You'll only be able to go sort of left and right. So that'll just give you a line. So that's the only real restriction we put on um, these V1 and V2. Okay, so that's a little bit about span of one and two vectors with a geometrical um, influence or angle on it. Um, in future videos, I'm going to talk more about equations of planes. I'm going to do lots more examples. And um, we'll talk about planes that don't necessarily go through the origin. Okay. Um, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to get your feedback on what I'm doing. You can always put them in the comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching and tune in for the forthcoming videos where I'll discuss planes and more um, vectors and general introduction to vectors. Thanks for watching.